Hello there YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and as promised, I'm going to go over the final game that I played in the Third Coast Game 60 challenge. And this is a tournament that I won clear first with three and a half points out of four. So this is my last round game against uh, Gene Scott. He's an expert, I think his reign is about 2040. And my reign is 1982 at the time, it's uh, over 2000 now. So this was an open Catalan. I uh, captured on uh, C4. This is actually the first time that I played the open Catalan in a uh, tournament game. So I, I actually didn't know the exact theory, but I knew the ideas for look, from looking at other open Catalan games, especially you know those played by Kramnik. So I knew the idea, but I didn't know the exact uh, sequence of moves. So I play bishop to b7, and, and the open Catalan is an opening where white can develop a lot of pressure. You know, he'll bring his rooks probably to d1 and c1, he'll develop his bishop to f4, and uh, sometimes uh, he'll put his knight on e5. I, that didn't happen in this game, but black's idea is to put his pieces behind some kind of a c5 advance. If he can advance the pawn to c5 and uh, liquefy white's center, then he will have equalized. So the problem is that black has sort of a cramped position because there's always this threat of the knight coming into e5. And uh, the black queen gets in the way a lot of the time. So sometimes the queen tucks herself away on b8, sometimes a8, and sometimes the queen goes to b6 and a7. But the idea is black wants to put his rooks on the d and c files opposite white's rooks, and he'll play knight d7 and he'll push to c5. So that that is the general idea behind this uh, opening. So he plays bishop f4, and I wasn't sure what exactly the best move is. It turns out actually that knight c6 is a pretty good move, but I didn't know a whole lot about it, and it seemed rather counterintuitive to block the pawn that I'm trying to advance. So I played bishop d6 instead, and I'm okay if he takes, because then uh, if I can take with the pawn and I can compete with him for the open c-file. So he brings the knight to d2, and a lot of people will play this exchange on f4, but I don't like it, because I think it gives white too much dark square control in the center, and it's a waste of time. I mean, my bishop went from uh, f8 to e7 to d6 and then took on f4, and his bishop only had to move once to achieve this. So I, even though there are long-term weaknesses for white, I don't like playing this position for black. I think it just gives white too much uh, control. Instead, I played a move, I'm not sure if this specific move has been played here before, but I play rook to a7, and the idea here is that it gets off of the long diagonal, it protects my bishop on b7, which helps tactically in a lot of lines, and my queen can even come to a8, and the queen coming to a8 gives me extra pressure on the long diagonal and it allows my f rook co to come to c8 and support this c5 push. So that was my idea. And there are uh, a couple of reasonable moves for white here. I, mean, he, I think he should play rook f to c1 because he wants to put some pressure on this uh, half open c file. He wants to make it hard for me to play this pawn to c5 break. So after, like, knight to d7, he should play bishop e5, solidifying his dark square, so that if there's ever an exchange, he'll just take back with the pawn. And now I can play queen a8 with this super fianchetto, and it prevents him from playing this pawn to e4, and it also prepares rook c8 and the uh, c5 pawn push. So that is uh, that was my idea, if rook f to c1. He can also play e4 here, threatening this uh, peace fork, pawn to e5. But now that he's committed this pawn to e4, I think it's okay for black to exchange on f4, because then knight to c6, and uh, white has two weak squares that can never be defended by a pawn, d4 and f4. If white pushes this pawn to e5, which he shouldn't, I think he should play a, a soft move like queen d3 here. But if he plays pawn to e5, this is great for black, because now I'm fixing his pawns on weak squares. He can threaten mate, but it's no big deal. 
so this uh, this would give black an advantage clearly. Instead, in this position, he played a4, which I think is a mistake. Now, if you were black, uh, you know, some players like to, whenever they see the pawn on a4, push the pawn to b4. In this position, I think it's a positional mistake, because white is, white is getting the c4 square, and he's not giving up any squares to black, because white's pawn is still on b2. So, b4 gives up c4, doesn't really gain anything. But I played this move instead, b takes a4, and this gains me this great square b5 for my bishop. And it also forces white to lose some time capturing the pawn. He traded first on d6, and now he took, and now my bishop gets to b5. And now, look at this long diagonal for this uh, terrible Catalan bishop. It's, uh, it's not doing anything, because I've cleared all the targets off the diagonal. So this, I, uh, I feel that black has a good initiative here. Also, this pawn is pinned, so it takes him three tempi to get his f rook to c1. So he plays rook there, there, and now when his rook gets to c1, I just double. And here, I think that black is better. So he decides to, to completely give me control over the uh, c file, and he'll play somewhere else. So. He plays h3, giving his king a place to go, and I bring my knight in. And then, uh, actually, I probably, maybe I leave my knight on b8, because my knight is doing a really good job on uh, b8 defensively. So then he plays knight to b3, and he's preparing to challenge me on the c file. And now I come off to b6. I think b8 might have been a better square, but I play b6 in the game, and now he brings his knight away. And he's bringing his knight away from the center, which lets me know, okay, maybe I should be playing in the center. So I play pawn to e5. And here he pushes his pawn to g4, a move I really hate. Uh, because although he's threatening to advance and kick my knight, he's creating these weak squares, h4 and f4. And especially this f4 square, because there's going to be an exchange of pawns, f4 will be completely unguarded. I think uh, after this move g4, white is just in too much trouble on the dark squares. H6 is a useful move anyway, because it stops me from getting checkmated later in the game. So queen to b4, knight to f8, coming into e6 with pressure on uh, d4. And then he brings his knight away from the center again. So because he brought his knight away from the center, now I see, okay, I can take. And takes back, and now I play d5, stopping this uh, diagonal for the bishop on g2. And it creates a situation where he's got these, uh, this fixed pawn on d4, which I can come in with my knight to attack. This knight is like a hero. He's going to hop into e6, hitting d4 and the weak f4 square. So the knight comes back, and now I come in with my knight to e6, and he plays bishop to f1. Now, this move alarmed me when I saw it over the board, because I realized, oh, my queen is hanging. He'll be able to take on b5 and then bring his rook in and attack this uh, isolated pawn. But... Black just has a really great position here. I bring my knight into f4, and then uh, he brings his rook over, and I drop my queen back to b8. The effect of this is subtle. I'm protecting the queen by bringing it next to my rook, so I'm threatening bishop takes f1, and then knight takes h3 after the bishop is gone. He plays his knight in with pressure on uh, a6, and now there's a long uh, sequence. I take on f1, and then he takes my queen on b8, but instead of recapturing, I take back with check on h3. So he's got to get out of check. He captures my bishop, and then I capture the queen, and I'm threatening two pawns. So I've come out ahead in that tactical sequence, but wait, there's more. Uh, b3, and now knight takes g4. I actually saw this position uh, when, he, you know, when he played knight to c5. So captures on a6, and now I play rook to a8 with the uh, x-ray of the a2 square, where my rook will be very effective on the 7th rank. So he brings his knight back, and I go to a2, and then he checks me, and I come up with my king. I thought he would go to e2 here, but he didn't. He went to e1. So now another long sequence of checks. I check him on the back rank, and then I check him on g1, stopping his king from coming over to the king side. So then he comes this way, and I take this pawn for check, and I check him here, and he goes to the back rank. So now there are several uh, ways that I can play. White 
uh, black is just much, much better here, up material, and he's got these uh, kingside class pawns. So I can probably start pushing my pawns right away, but I decide to improve the position of my knight on g1. So then he plays rook e3, and I take this opportunity to fall back to uh, defend his b, his, uh, b pawn advancing. So he just starts pushing the b pawn, and then he pushes it again, and I check him with the knight, and he comes over, and then I just take this pawn. So this is basically blitz. We have both have less than five minutes on our clock, but my position is a lot easier to play. He captures, and then check, winning back the rook because of the knight fork, and then some more moves are played. And I actually ended up giving him back this pawn, but in this position, or a position soon after this, uh, white lost on time. So I was able to win the tournament with this uh, victory over uh, an expert in the last round.